Welcome to Aylesford on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois, and daily Mass from the National Shrine of St. Therese of Lisieux. The Shrine is a blessing from a very generous donation from the Margie and Robert E. Peterson Foundation. Good morning, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Coming together as God's family. We begin the celebration of our Eucharist by humbly acknowledging to God and before one another that we have sinned. And we embrace the totality of God's loving mercy for us. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and the Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our divine physician. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that we may experience at all times the fruit produced by the Paschal observances through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. We set sail for Troas, making a straight run for Stamroche, and on the next day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, a leading city in the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We spent some time in that city. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate along the river, where we thought there would be a place of prayer. We sat and spoke with the women who had gathered there. One of them, a woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth, from the city of Thyatira, a worshiper of God, listened. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what Paul was saying. After she had her household had been baptized, she offered us an invitation. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed prevailed on us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord takes delight in his people. Sing to the Lord a new song of praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. The Lord Lord takes takes delight delight in in his people. people. Let them praise his name in festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves his people, and he adorns the lowly with victory. The The Lord Lord takes takes delight delight in in his people. people. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all his faithful. Alleluia. The The Lord Lord takes takes delight delight in in his his people. people. The Lord be with you. Dear friends, let us be attentive to this reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who proceeds from the Father, 
he will testify to me. And you also testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have told you this so that you may not fall away. They will expel you from the synagogues. In fact, the hour is coming when everyone who kills you will think he is offering worship to God. They will do this because they have not known either the Father or me. I have told you this so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. The last verse of the first psalm that we prayed this morning for morning prayer says, Why are you cast down, my soul? Why groan within me? Hope in God. I will praise him still, my Savior and my God. I think this psalm, and especially that last verse, captures perfectly what many of us have experienced, are experiencing during this time of pandemic. We are cast down. We're groaning within ourselves, yearning, complaining about the impositions that are, that are imposed upon us by our government leaders, uh, decisions that we might not always agree with, decisions that are certainly make daily life very difficult for all of us. And in, this, and in the face of all of that, these calamitous times in which we live, the verse of, of that psalm ought to ring clearly in our memories to console us. Hope in God, I will praise him still. This morning, instead of offering a reflection from from my own heart, I would like to read a sermon that was delivered just about 1,600 years ago. A sermon delivered by St. Augustine. St. Augustine was bishop in Hippo in North Africa at a time of the waning years of the Roman Empire. When he was a young man, he went to Rome, and Rome was still was still very much the heart of the empire, although at that time the Roman emperor was living in Milan. And eventually, Augustine moved from Rome to Milan to be at the center of things, the center of political life, the center of academic life, the center of cultural life of the Roman Empire at the time. And while, bishop, while Augustine was the bishop of Hippo, in 410, the city of Rome was overrun by, uh, by what he called pagans, barbarians. It took another couple of decades before the Roman Empire itself collapsed. But imagine if you're a, a citizen of the Roman Empire in the late 300s, in the early 400s, when, bishop, when Augustine was the bishop, can you imagine the feeling of calamity, the feeling of the world is collapsing around them, the great and mighty city of Rome fell under the sway of barbarians. How much longer will it be before the barbarians come and storm the gates of my own little village my own little town in which I live. And sure enough, towards the very end of Augustine's life, he saw his own city of Hippo fall and collapse under the, 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 the onslaught of the barbarian armies. He saw the collapse of the Roman Empire, the end of the world as people, as people con conceived of it, the end of the world as they knew it. And so in the face of that, those disastrous times, St. Augustine delivered a homily. Our thoughts in this present life should turn on the praise of God, because it is in praising God 
that we shall rejoice forever in the life to come. And no one can be ready for the next life unless he trains himself for it now. So we praise God during our earthly life, and at the same time we make our petitions to him. Our praise is expressed with joy, our petitions with yearning. We have been promised something we do not yet possess, and because the promise was made by one who keeps his word, we trust him and we are glad. But insofar as possession is delayed, we can only long and yearn for it. It is good for us to persevere in longing until we receive what was promised and yearning is over. Then praise alone will remain. Because there are these two periods of time, the one that now is, beset with the trials and troubles of this life, and the other yet to come, a life of everlasting serenity and joy, we are given two liturgical seasons, one before Easter and the other after. The season before Easter signifies the troubles in which we live here and now, while the time after Easter, which we are celebrating at present, signifies the happiness that will be ours in the future. What we commemorate before Easter is what we experience in this life. What we celebrate after Easter points to something we do not yet possess. That is why we keep the first season with fasting and prayer. But now the fast is over, and we devote the present season to praise. Such is the meaning of the Alleluia we sing. Both these periods are represented and demonstrated for us in Christ our head. The Lord's passion depicts for us our present life of trial, shows how we must suffer and be afflicted and finally die. The Lord's resurrection and glorification show us the life that will be given to us in the future. Now, therefore, brethren, we urge you to praise God. That is what we are telling each other when we say, Alleluia. You say to your neighbor, praise the Lord, and he says the same to you. We are all urging one another to praise the Lord, and all thereby doing what each of us urges the other to do. But see that your praise comes from your whole being. In other words, see that you praise God, not with your lips and voices alone, but with your minds, your lives, and all your actions. The sermon continues, but I think it's clear enough that St. Augustine was, give, was trying to give a message of hope to his congregation. You're looking at the world around you, and it seems it's on the verge of collapse. But remember that we are living in a passing world. Our true and final home is eternal bliss with God in heaven. Let that be your focus. Let that be your comfort. Let that be your joy, not only in this present time of pandemic, which we hope will surely and certainly come to an end quickly, but also as we journey through the rest of our life when we will undoubtedly have more trials and tribulations to face. St. Augustine, pray for us. With great confidence, let us present our needs and our intentions to the Lord for the offering of this Eucharist. We pray in the first place, as we always do, that the Lord would bless our, our very broken and fragile world with the gift of his peace, and that we might be deserving of this gift of peace. Let us resolve that we ourselves would be peacemakers 
in all of our relationships with one another, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray that the Lord would bless far beyond their imagining all of the generous benefactors of the Carmelite order here and around the world, especially the members of the Society of the Little Flower. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray that Jesus, our divine physician, would lay his healing touch, his healing hand, upon all of the minds and hearts and bodies of all those who are suffering from, uh, directly from the COVID-19, for all those who suffer indirectly uh, because uh, they, they can't be near their loved ones and during, this, during this particular time of trial. We pray to the Lord. We continue to pray for our first responders, our nurses, our doctors, medical researchers, all those who are so desperately trying to find uh, a cure or something that will attenuate the, uh, the suffering of peoples right now. We pray to the Lord. In the silence of our hearts, we pray for all those others for whom we have specifically promised to pray. We pray for those who have no one to pray for them, especially those who are abandoned in hospitals, in nursing homes, and in prisons. We pray to the Lord. And for the souls in purgatory, for all these, we pray to the Lord. Loving and merciful Father, we thank you for being mindful of all of our needs, especially of the ones that remain unspoken in our hearts. Our faith assures us that you are already at work hearing and answering our prayers, because we make them in the name of Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. How blessed you are, Lord God of all creation, because through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which the earth has given and our human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. How blessed you are, Lord God of all creation, because through your goodness we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Friends, pray that your sacrifice and mine will be pleasing and acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant Church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit and perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our apostolic administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the glorious Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And so now at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, and now you say to us, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her unity and peace in accordance with your holy will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always.
we extend to one another a sign of that peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. And we honor our Blessed Mother, Regina Celi, Letare, alleluia. Quia, quem eruisti portare, alleluia. Resurrexit, sicudixit. Alleluia, ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, St. Therese of the Child Jesus, thank you everyone for sharing in the Eucharist.